Serious. What do you think is the creepiest, most disturbing, unsolved mystery ever? Part 7. Now just relax and enjoy also if you like. Please subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. I still find it creepy how Ted Bundy, yes, everyone's knows him, we still to this day are unsure how many people he killed, as he never admitted truly how many women he killed. That there very well could be his victims' bodies still scattered somewhere. Not rested, same goes for any other killer who essentially lost count. It's quite disturbing, honestly, if you really think hard about it. Account 3. Unfortunately, there's not much on the case of Eddie Castor, 15, Rachel Castor, 18, and Veronica Flores. 16, Rachel was in my math and gym class at the time. She was a casual acquaintance, shared a joint on the field and off campus at lunch, along with other stoner kids. There's a FB page also, on April 13, 1984. The Castor's father dropped the three children off that night at a golf and stuff in Norwalk, border of Downey in L.A. country. With strict orders to be picked up at a pre-arranged time, Eddie Castor, Rachel Castor, and Veronica Flores, a fellow friend of them, were all prepared for a night of fun. Unfortunately, they were later found dead at around 10 p.m. Eddie was found with a slashed throat on the sidewalk. It was shown that he crawled over the riverbank and passed out on the riverbed. Both Veronica and Rachel were both found at the riverbank of the San Gabriel River, which is right behind the golf end stuff. Veronica had a stab in the back, and Rachel had multiple slashes over her body. Veronica was four and, half months pregnant, had a learning disability, and was about to get married to her boyfriend and move to a nearby apartment. After being annoyed of dealing with a group of students who seemed intent on making her miserable, she transferred from Southgate High School to Odyssey. She was about to get married to her boyfriend and move to a nearby apartment. Eddie and Rachel were the fourth and fifth children of six in the family. They were very bright and well, loved by friends and community. Detectives looked into the case and were amazed. Many theories were floating around including one that believed that a cult killed them. Since it was Friday the 13th and pentagrams were painted and frogs were impaled on a fence nearby, it is unknown why exactly they were targeted for murder. Many people believe that the trio was killed due to bullying, since Veronica was harassed many times during her school time. However, the river area was a relatively crime-free zone. Richard Ramirez was known to be around this time frame. He attacked or killed 25 people from March to August. In 2009, detectives linked Ramirez to the killing of Mei Long in San Francisco on April 10, 1984, which was exactly three days before the caster. Flores killings, Ramirez was known to travel all over the state looking for people to kill. Veronica's family wondered if it was Richard Ramirez who killed them. Detectives never really thought of the idea but they have never carefully checked to see if Ramirez was involved. Detectives took another look at the case in 2009. They collected DNA from evidence, which they had believed belonged to someone other than the three teenagers. They ran the DNA through a database of criminals, but they got no hits, meaning the samples didn't correspond to any criminals from whom DNA had been collected. Account 4. The disappearances of Felipe Santos and Terrence Williams, two men go missing after being arrested by the same deputy within three months. He claims he dropped them off at Circle K stores, but his stories are inconsistent. They haven't been found since. My dad, having gotten his green card a few months before, was terrified of getting pulled over by cops since he was working in the same area. Account 5. The murder of little Gregory in France. A four years old was missing in 1984. The same day, they found his body in a river seven kilometers away. The creepiest part of this case is that the family started to receive weird phone calls by someone named The Crow. Up to four years before, a man with a weird voice was threatening them. Then they started receiving letters threatening them. A day after the murder, they received calls and a letter mocking them. They never found out who was the murderer. There is a Netflix documentary about it. Account 6. Jonathan Luna That one still stays with me. 
He was a lawyer from Baltimore who mysteriously left his office one night, leaving his glasses, which he needed to drive, and his cell phone on his desk. He then mysteriously drove through the late night and early morning hours through Delaware and New Jersey to a location in Pennsylvania, which was not the most direct route, where he was found dead in a creek with his car running and blood inside. On the drive to PA, he used EZ Pass for the first few tolls, then switched to paying cash after. Account 7. Maybe I'm biased because I'm from New Mexico, but the West Mesa killer has had us women of NM scared for over 10 years, still somewhere out there. Account 8. I live in Alaska, and I think about how many serial killers are active here all the time. It's insanely easy to disappear someone up here. I know this isn't exactly the question posed, but it does disturb me. Account 9. I just read about the Nanjing mutilation case. On the evening of John 10, that 1996, Diao Aiching left her Nanjing University's dormitory. Although she had every sign of coming back later, she didn't come back. Her body, which was chopped, dismembered into over 2,000 pieces, came back instead. They were packed into bags and strewn all over the Nanjing University perimeters. Found in the days during John 1923-1996 and another part of Nanjing near the municipal government office, up until today, rumors and theories abound about when she died, where she died, how she died, and the murderer's background and identity and how she met him. There were unconfirmed reports of someone being in custody numerous times, but no charge could be brought. And the creepiest thing is, who the hell can dismember a person into 2,000 pieces and still eat and sleep with the corpse for almost 10 days? Who can evade the police for over 20 years? And a fake, he, she never killed again, or at least no other similar murders ever popped up. Account 10. The Doomsday Couple, a.k.a. Lori Vallow, and Chad Day Bell. She had five husbands and probably murdered two owed them. Her kids got murdered and buried in DeBell's at Pet Cemetery. Everything went public because the grandparents could not get in touch with the kids, and they asked the police to check on their grandkids. Account 11. The Brabant Killers. Nivelle's Gang. 28 people were killed by a gang in Belgium during the 80 Taos, who would turn up a crowded supermarkets and shoot people indiscriminately, sometimes whole families, while stealing fairly small amounts of money. They were never caught, and there are indications that they were connected with intelligence agencies and far-right groups attempting to create a strategy of tension similar to Operation Gladio, years of lead in Italy. Account 12. This one is from my own family. Grace and her daughter Gracie disappeared in 1978. Her husband was considered a suspect in their disappearance, and they never found the bodies of Grace and Gracie. Michael Reap died in 1997, but was listed as a John Doe in 2012. With his death, any real hope of learning the fates of Grace and Gracie and giving my family some closure died as well. Account 13. The Beast of Gévaudan. Unknown animal attacks, kills, and eats more than a hundred people in an area of rural France for a period of three years. Several large wolves are killed under suspicion of being the beast, but attacks continue until what is believed to be the actual animal is killed and dissected, but not identified. Account 14. The Lane Bryant Murders, Feb 2, 2008, in Tinley Park, I.L. Some guy lined up six women in the back room of the store, shot them all, one survived, and got away without a trace. One of the victims was my son's best friend's fiancé, heartbreaking. Account 15. The aerial school landings in Zimbabwe, 60. School children saw crafts landing and beings coming out of them. The kids interacted with the beings. They were put under evaluation by a Harvard psychiatrist. They all told virtually the same story and drew the same drawings. It was concluded that they were telling the truth. <laughs>